All right, ladies and gentlemen, really had a great time. It was just a lot of good gems that they dropped overall all day long. And uh, following this series, everyone, please do keep your eyes and your ears peeled for what is to come next. And just want to say thank you again one more time. Everyone, let's give them a big round of applause again before we proceed. Thank you. And once again, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Dr. Lee. All right. And as I mentioned, now we're all aware that there is economic equality in this world that we live in. But have you ever considered all the possibility that are disparities that extend beyond the economic disparity? Well, I'm confident that many of us here, including the upcoming speakers, are working very hard to make the world a more inclusive place by closing gaps in many, many areas, including digital access, financial um, opportunities, and the gender equality. Everyone Everyone, let's welcome with me by putting your hands together, Ms. Nadia Ismadi, co-founder and CEO of POD. Welcome, please join us on stage. Ms. Lumbi Lambo, founder and CEO of JB Dondolo, and Ms. Pawasha Faisen, Senior Manager of Corporate and Investment Banking of Habib Bank. Taking charge of moderating this session will be Jennifer Tan, the head of 10 times 1,000 of Tech for Inclusion and also the chief executive of Alipay Financial Services Hong Kong. Ladies, I will hand the stage over to you. Thank you. All right, just making sure that we have all our microphones. All good. Is there no sound coming out of that one? All right, let's try mine. Would you like to try mine as a start? Perhaps there's some glitches happening here. Let's try mine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, much, much better. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. What a sunny day, huh? Uh, actually, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, not only just because, uh, you know, I have a chance to you know, have a panel discussion with three outstanding ladies. Uh, and also I am told that this is the only all-women panel today, okay? And of course, other than that is because we, fr we four are all alumni of 10 times 1,000. Okay, maybe some of you not know about what is 10 times 1,000. Actually, this is a philanthropic uh, initiative between Alipay and the International Finance Corporation back in 2018. And these three, you know, actually they are our first batch of alumni. And uh, the objective of uh, 10 times 1,000 uh, is to, you know, uh, to uh, bridge the digital gap uh, and also to nurture not less than uh, 1,000 uh, tech leaders or digital uh, talents, uh, you know, in the coming 10 years. And uh, we currently, we already have over 5,000 alumni from, you know, close to 100 uh, countries. And today I'm very happy, you know, to have a chance to discuss uh, with our, you know, uh, these uh, three alumni. And I say, okay, probably, I understand some of you are first time to Hong Kong. So maybe I give you each one minute to s introduce yourself. How about starting from uh, Pawasha? Yes. Thank you so much, Thank you so much, Jen. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in Hong Kong uh, representing my country, Pakistan. Um, I'm Palvasha Fezan. I have seven years of digital financial inclusion experience um, in, my, in my country. I've launched three fintech applications and now I've transitioned into a corporate and investment banking role. This is a very intentional choice on my part because I felt that digital inclusion requires a sustainable business case and I'm in my early years of experience so I just want to gain some perspective on how the financial world has cracked the profitability use case. And as I gain 
doing my learning, I do have the digital side intact, but I do want to learn more about how to make sustainability, introduce sustainability in business cases when it comes to digitization. So in my country, we, we are the fifth largest population with 50% female penetration. So it's really, really important to have the female perspective. So I'm humbled and honored to be here sharing the stage with these wonderful ladies. And, and Obviously, the 10 by 1000 platform is a great platform through which we met online, but I feel like we have known each other all our lives. So thank you so much for having me. Hi, uh, my name is Lumbi Malambo. I'm the CEO and founder of JB Dondolo. So uh, we work to eliminate the lack of access to clean water for millions of women and girls in Zimbabwe by providing sustainable water solutions so that they're customizable in the communities. Testing. So one, two, yeah. We've seen that we've seen that women spend a lot of time collecting water up to ten hours a day. And they cannot afford to focus on themselves, to gain the skills that they need to start their own businesses. We've seen also that girls skip school due to lack of water when there's no water in the schools. So we, where we come in is that um, we've seen that when we provide access to water, we can uh, reduce the distance that they walk to less than half an hour a day. And that, in turn, allows the women to produce income on average from zero to $15, uh, $15 a day and allow women to start businesses and girls to go to school. So we're not just in Zimbabwe. Actually, we're looking to, sp uh, to, to, uh, uh, to Spain across Zimbabwe to other countries in Africa and all over the world. And I'm very grateful to be here. Thank you so much. Hello. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, I'm Nadia. Pleasure to be here with everyone. Um, so I run this platform, a fintech company called Pod. We are a financial well-being platform to help the underserved to get access to financing. So we help them to save money, uh, borrow, build credit trail, consume other financial products, all through digital platform. We started in Malaysia and now we've also entered Indonesia, um, but we have a regional focus to basically enable the likes of farmers, um, your food delivery riders, freelancers, self-employed individuals to get access to the right financial product at the right time. Um, prior to this, I was in uh, asset management, um, so capitalistic. Uh, we were basically helping uh, pension funds and central banks to get access to investment vehicles. Um, and at that time, the only Python I know was the snake. Uh, now I learned that it is also a computing uh, language. So then we started um, in 2019. My co-founder and I, um, and to date, we have serviced over 70,000 people who previously could not get access to any form of financing. We helped them build credit trail, and I've been enjoying the adventure and really looking forward to connect with some of you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we can see, you know, a very interesting, uh, you know, self-introduction of, from, you know, three different uh, countries, uh, you know, diff three different uh, background. So you can see the diversity. You know, Pravasha, since you sit sitting sit next to me, so you know, I ask you the first question. Okay, um, you know, um, you know, in, in your career uh, pathway, did you come across or you face any challenge about, you know, a gender equal inequality, and you know, how how did you overcome that? Thank you, Jen. Uh, this is a question very close to my heart. So as I said, Pakistan is 50% female, but only 20% of my country's females have employment opportunities in the formal labor force. So meeting a woman like me or senior women like me is rare for our male colleagues. So of course, uh, there is a very strict code of how a female should behave in my country. And uh, I don't adhere to that code. Uh, so gender inequality at workplace uh, was first introduced to me when a coworker just said, uh, Palrasha, your uh, voice is too loud. Maybe you should, uh, maybe you should talk softly. And I remember um, thinking, 
that I'm not looking for personal feedback. That was my response to him. And I think that is a very, very important response. Because overcoming this sort of first introductory barrier of who the woman is who's uh, coming to a workplace and finding her place, I think it's really important to not question yourself, not doubt yourself, and use your voice. I like the fact that I have a loud voice. When I'm trying to make a point, I, that's how I communicate my passion. And that is what translates into my career choices as well, what I've been able to do in my career, professional life as well. And when uh, that happens, there's always somebody who's telling you to be more polite, more soft, more mute. But I would suggest to all the ladies to please take your space, sit at the table, use your voice, and don't lower your voice for anyone. Because you know yourself, I think everybody uh, knows exactly when they're trying to make a point, when they feel passionate, that, how they feel, and that is just who they should remain true to. Other than that, I also feel that when women enter workplaces, we are often uh, told to conform to certain gender roles, like take minutes of the meeting, or book the meeting room, uh, maybe get tea because those are the maybe the norms in our society. But it's really important for our uh, fellow colleagues to unlearn those things at a workplace because strategically important decisions are very, very important uh, for women to be a part of, especially in my country where there is a profitability use case because 50% of the population is female. So it's really, really important to um, to identify these, uh, these gender inequality uh, nuances and to address them in a a way where you bring your best self forward because thousands of people could have joined that workplace or could have been that founder but it's you it's you who's sharing the stage so I think taking that space and using your voice is extremely important yeah. yes actually I think we should not restrict by those stereotypes be, you know, women must do this, must, you know, be a very gentle, soft, or uh, need, need to have low voice, okay? So, you know, Lumbia, you know, we understand, you know, uh, gender inequality actually is not only limited to workspace. Uh, actually, it also affect, you know, other aspects of, uh, you know, in the, our society. So, I understand you have, you, ha you have been working actively, you know, to advocating, you know, for women and girls. So, can you share your personal experience on that with us? Absolutely, Jennifer. That, that statement is very true. Gender inequality stretches all across. It's not just limited to the, work, to the workplace, by the way. We see that in communities. Like in communities where I work, like I was saying earlier, women and girls actually walk distances up to 18 miles a day to collect water. So you tell me. So if they're spending that kind of time collecting water and girls doing the same thing, what time do they have to focus on themselves, to gain skills for themselves so they can, you know, become educators, start their own businesses, and so forth? And what time do girls really have to go to school? So when you look at that, really, it puts people in a bracket as if the collection of water really is for women. Come on now. The collection of water is for everyone. Imagine what that would look like if everybody in the family, I mean everybody, had that responsibility, shared responsibility, and they all collected water, a shared responsibility where my brother collects water, my sister collects water, then women wouldn't be so left behind. We wouldn't be sitting here today discussing this topic. So, yes, water in my country and everywhere else, all over the world, keeps people behind, and it's an inequality for all. So, not just that, but if women are not educated, then we're talking about you know, inequalities in, in education, inequalities in healthcare, inequalities in opportunities. So we don't have that fair or equal distribution of wealth and benefits. So yes, it spreads all over, be it women in Pakistan, for example, I was talking to a Palwasha, who cook all day, you know, cook the, spending time in the kitchen baking bread, or wherever you are, it is an inequality. And uh, I think when we come together, we just need to shift the way we think. Let's think equal for all, equal everywhere. If we think that way, then we, we can all achieve this goal that the UN already started to all advocate for one thing and one goal, to be equal everywhere. Yes, thank you very much. Hey, Nadia. Uh, I would like to ask you a question about this financial divide, you know, because you, I understand you have been working very hard on this area in order to address the issue. So can you share with us, you know, what you are doing and how you achieve that? 
Uh, thank you, Jen. When we first started, we built our own app-based platform. So basically, our idea is people could go to this app, start saving money towards whatever they care about. It could be you know, a vacation, um, buying a new gadget, what have you. Um, and then they can get access to other financial products like financing, uh, insurance, uh, small micro investments. But then we realized actually the adoption was uh, relatively low, simply because there's a lot of friction. Because when you're building financial products and services, um, convenience is one thing, but trust is very important. So the trust currently that majority of the people have is actually with the established financial institutions. But established financial institutions struggle to create a very user-friendly platform and engagements that basically people want to interact with digital platforms to do uh, basic services. So we found a nice way to combine the two where we started breaking down our tech, our app, into um, embedded finance model. So what it means is that basically from your um, gaming app or uh, social media, et cetera, you can get access to financial products and services because nobody wake up thinking about, I should get insurance today or I should start saving money. No, everybody, people wake up thinking about how to make more money and how to spend money. So if you interact with people, through the platform that they're already familiar with. Um, and M Sorry, high net worth people are far passing through. <laughs> so basically, if let's say you allow people to consume financial products through the touch points that they already are familiar with, it makes it a lot easier for adoption. So what we've done is we integrate the savings, financing, credit scoring, building tool into rider apps. So Shopee Food, Food Panda riders could now get access to basic financial services directly from the rider app itself. So you don't need to educate them on how to use our app. They can just use the app that they currently use to make money to basically consume financial products and services. I think that was probably one of the things. If you don't remember anything I'm telling you, embedded finance, go and look it up and try to figure out how you individually can be part of that or contribute to embedded finance because it makes a lot of difference for inclusion. Thank you very much for what you have done, you know, uh, to uh, help those uh, female and all the general public, how to achieve that. And, you know, you talk about the fintech, and for us, I understand you work for a bank, okay? So I would also like to know, for a bank, you know, you mentioned about HPL, also, you know, take, uh, you know, they have taken some initiative, try to address this issue. Can you share with us? So HPL is uh, calls itself a digital company with a banking license because that's an aspiration that we aspire towards or, uh, as employees. Um, so we came up with this uh, smart uh, disbursement module that uh, enables us to target the underserved communities and give them digital subsidies or social security disbursements that, that were previously cash-based. This is one of the rec recognized to be one of the most transparent technologies to give funding to any sort of underserved communities within uh, Pakistan. One of the examples, very successful examples, uh, that was also recognized by the World Economic Forum was the Benazir Income Support Program, where we use biometric verification with live finger detection capabilities to disperse funding to rural uh, women of uh, Pakistan. Around 3 million plus women could access this uh, social security disbursement with a complete amount in their hands and financial independence. So it empowers people to financially um, take decisions, to make choices, and enables women to have some sort of financial freedom within their households. We, we tried this uh, previously, the government tried this technology with debit cards, but debit cards cannot be in the woman's possession all the time, right? In a patriarchal society, it's okay to, it's, it can happen that the man in the family, the head of the family, can just take away that power. But the power of biometric is not something that you can take away. We used a similar technology for, fine, uh, for farmers of Pakistan, where we launched the first uh, digital farmer subsidy program, where they could get point of sale uh, discounts for their fertilizer inputs for their farms. So we benefited around 300,000 farmers through this program. And we used the similar technology to transfer emergency COVID funds to 12 million households. So HPL invests in sustainable in, uh, technology, and I love to be part of use cases where we act responsibly, we ensure transparency, because we all know that there is a lo lot of leakage attached to development funds being dispersed in rural communities. So I take a lot of pride in the, in the responsible financial inclusion that we have been a part of. Yeah. yeah thank you very much. Uh, Lumbia, actually, in, in last session, you know, you, you're talking about 
uh, digital uh, technology, riding on digital technology can improve the quality of life. You're talking about healthcare, you're talking about you know, what you have done you know, for the water quality. I'm, I'm, you know, that's always talking about, you know, it, it is, it, is the good or bad for the digital technology? Whether it really, you know, help us to close the gap, you know, or it creates some other issues? You know, Jennifer, that's a very good question. The impact of digital technology depends solely on how it is used and implemented, okay? When used correctly, and inclusively, digital technology has a tendency to improve access to education, access to healthcare, and access to uh, global uh, opportunities. And hence, it also means that you know, everybody has shared wealth, equal wealth, everywhere. On the other hand, if it is not, if it is not planned correctly, it means that it could further create challenges for those who lack access and skills to leverage these digital technologies. So, the way we need to go about this is that we need to implement digital technologies that include everyone and leave no one behind so that we're not talking about this topic ever again. Now, for the communities that lack access to clean water, Technology is going to be a big thing. Actually, quite frankly, I think it's going to be a game changer going forward. Because uh, for my company, I'm already implementing uh, water technologies so that it includes women and girls so that they don't have to travel so far. You know, I don't want them to be ever without water. I want sustainability, affordability, and accessibility. So. I do see that in this case, digital technology can be a game changer. I know we're waiting for the helicopter to pass through. But we are near we, very, uh, you know, uh, five or six stars hotel, so they have their own uh, helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, I want you to imagine what this would look like. If there's so much time saved that women and girls are spending right now. If this, all this time is saved and channeled towards training and education, not only would we create a lot of jobs, but also think about this. Women and girls will have an, a huge space to play, to participate, and be counted in the global economy. So that's why my company is always actively looking out and seeking out to collaborate with technology companies for innovative solutions. Because I know that only through technology can we actually make a change so that everyone has access. And I mean everyone, we, by that I mean we all have one common goal, to implement technologies that move us forward and don't leave anyone behind. And that is the only way forward. I understand I'm running out of time, but I would like to have the last question with Nadia. Based on your experience, how will you drive or what you have any you know, way to, to help to solve uh, this uh, you know, digital equity and also uh, the financial inclusion? Um, that's a very good question. I think um, digital equity is very important. If anything, pandemic taught us that you know everything digital um, is crucial for um, inclusion. So one of the things that I think is very important, no people to have to realize that no single entity could single-handedly take on digital inclusion. So it has to be multifaceted and collaborative effort amongst government, private sectors, NGOs, um, to be able to do this in a cost-effective manner and efficiently. Um, so one of the things that I would like to, again, re-emphasize, I only one message, which is embedded finance. Why I mentioned this over and over again for founders in the audience is because everyone keeps talking about sustainability today around business model and um, figuring out how do you monetize data. And I think digital inclusion or narrowing the digital divide is one of the ways by which you could create platforms that basically make you a pseudo fintech company where monetization could come in almost immediately as you have audience on your platform um, and use that data to kind of pro provide the right 
products at the right time because you have access to this kind of customization, personalized approach. So it is a combination of a few people having to narrow the digital gap. Um, and I, I invite all of you to think about your respective role as individuals or as corporations within your organization to create this change to promote for better inclusion. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, actually, and you're sorry for the sound issue at the very beginning, but your sharing, you guys sharing are very, uh, you know, inspiring. And uh, once again, you know, I think uh, we, uh, you know, uh, would like to give you a, a big round of applause. Uh, thank you for joining us, and thank you for your sharing. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies, and thank you, Jennifer, for being our moderator. Everyone, please return to your seats. Thank you for the sharing once again.